Puck taken by Serge Waugh for Canada to Yeremchuk. Yeremchuk skating in behind the net. Sets it up out in front and they score. Vaughn Carpin on the setup from behind the net. Well, his father can tell him all about trades. Lowell McConnell for many years in the NHL. Pittsburgh for the most part. Los Angeles Kings. Yeah. You, you know what's interesting about that trade, Al, is that there's only one player from Harvard in the NHL, and that is Neil Sheehy. Saves power play because Kenya Remchuk, right in the middle of your screen, 13 in red. You can see him there cross-checking Corey Millen. Boy, if once wasn't enough, twice certainly was. Referee Rutherford has whistled him off for high sticking. And now Steve Leach comes out of the penalty box, and the U.S. has a two-man advantage for the next 20 seconds. Out in front, Millen has it saved again by Burke. So Burke, a busy man, equal to every task, and Canada able to hold off the U.S. Five seconds left in the two-man advantage. Leach out in front, now to Young. They try to work it in behind the net now. Bill Gray is out of the box. It's a one-man advantage, and then Young nearly fans on the shot. Burke covers up, and a whistle stops play, and there's five seconds now left in the one-man advantage, and these two teams picking up where they left off in Bloomington on Thursday night. I don't know. A guy like Corey Mill, you know, Mike, will get on your nerves sooner or later. He's like a little uh, a mosquito that's on your shoulder all the time. You can't seem to swat him. He's just a little guy, but he's a thorn in their side. With Johansson. Johansson comes in over the line, trailed by Granado. He can't get it back to Tony. And Yoni scraps with it along the board. Puck comes loose. And a whistle because Yoni gets into it along the board with Johansson. Saved by Burke. Off the face off, swept in front, and then fanning on the shot with Steven. And we've got a penalty coming up. And again, the two teams have gotten to know each other quite well. And it's Stevens this time with Hamshaw. And Yoni wants a piece of the action as well. And there's Suggerud in your picture in addition. Now, I'm not sure that Kevin Stevens wasn't coming to the aid of uh, Clark Donatelli, who was in a battle with number five, Trent Yoni in front. There you can see Clark Donatelli. There are a couple of scenes out there. Watch Team USA try to draw the top guy on my angle up, then they'll move it to the side and directly across for a quick shot. Meanwhile, after Waugh covers up, we've got another scrap. Yoni. I think it's Tony Granato that's in there. Yep, Granato, I believe. You know, we, we both talked this morning about their Tony Granato, but how impressed we are with Granato. He's not a big player, but he has seemed to develop that fire under him over the last couple of months. By the way, Mike Arugiani standing right down behind this action, Mike. You know, intro, Al and uh, Bill, it's right down here in front of me. It really started when Yoni gave uh, Tony Granado an extra couple of little pushes in the face, and then Sean Burke, who had already froze the puck behind the net, he kind of jumped into it, and, and you're right, tempers are a little, a little tight and a little high right now, and I was surprised to see Burke kind of getting involved because Yanni was really the instigator in the whole incident. It was interesting to see how the penalties are called. So I got two of there for White, 14 on the rough. I got the goaltender what? for what? who went behind the net, who started everything. Right, you to, the no, no, no. no wait a you minute. The I, I didn't give him a, relax, relax. I didn't give him a penalty for that. I gave him a penalty for rough, and he had his glove in there. He hit three guys. I know. So, okay, here, guys hit him to okay here's what we got. We got one and five, got the roughs on you guys. Two and 14 on you guys for the rough. Here's how it all started. Watch 21 white and five red. Tony Granado from the United States and Trent Yanni. Here it is behind the net. That's what you call world-class audio, though. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> No, I was right. saying, time's a wasting. These these games are precious for these teams. They have to start making decisions. They have to start establishing uh, some continuity. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, let's take a look at head-to-head -head how these two teams have fared. They started on October 10th. As you can see, the games have been uh, close. Never more than a, a two-goal difference. And Canada leads 3-2. So Canada trying to get it started as Yeremchuk moves it up along the sides and he gets taken down. And now finally as the U.S. takes possession 
And Norton throws an elbow. Another stoppage of play in what has been a very testy first period. I wonder if Kenny Remchuk wants to fight off a little bit of Jeff Norton. If he does, he's going to have a mouthful. That is one big, strong defenseman, number six for Team USA, Jeff Norton out of University of Michigan. Really helps to have less weight on your legs. Here's a look at the penalty. Great half Nelson by Kenny Berry. Hmm. Been watching yeah. the WWF again. Granado to Young. Slap shot deflected in front. And it's wide. Ten seconds now left in the man advantage. Granado with it. He skates in. His shot saved. Covered up. And a little wrestling match goes on here. And more pushing and shoving as was epidemic in the first period. Oh. And a second Sean altercation. Burke. Yeah, Sean Burke shot. is right out in the middle of it again. You know, we should point out that if the U.S. power play looks a little disjointed, it might be because on this first unit, Scott Fusco is not in uniform today, and he is a, a big part of it. Craig Janney now has stepped out there with Millen and Granato, but it's usually Fusco that's there, so they have to adjust a little bit. Snuggerud now. Slap shot saved by Burke. And he covers up to stop it. And we'll be right back in Detroit after this message. The U.S. and Canada in opposite brackets. But they both have a pretty decent chance of winding up in that middle round. One to nothing, Canada. Donatelli now. Who hustles all the time. Is able to sweep it over to Snuggerud. His shot a save. Bill Gray tries to get it out. Pass up ahead, Zalaski takes it in behind his own net. And now we've got a penalty coming up. And as, it was as if it had a spin on it that just threw it wide of the net. Here's the penalty now that Steve Leach is serving. That was a charge, at least that's what it was called. You can almost feel it building though, Al. There were a lot of things that uh, Rutherford let go and finally. 18 to play in the second period. Up ahead, beautiful pass into Schreiber, and he scores. He took the pass from Craig Redman and sends it down ahead for Granado, who skates into the corner. Behind the net, wheels, gets the shot away, but it's blocked. Yeah, both of you, both of you. Get out of there. And Schreiber gets it up ahead now for Bradley. Bradley skates all the way in, backhander save, and then Terreri covers up. Young to Weinrich. Up ahead is Jones, but Chorsky was offside. And a little scrap with Redmond involved. And Chorsky. Now before it was Millen and, and number 24, Craig Redmond. Redson hasn't been making that much contact tonight with his body. 2-10 left in the second period. Up ahead to Urem, Chuck who scores. Weinrich to Johansson. Jones gets it back to Millen. And then Wah breaks the play up. And gets it up ahead to Berry. Berry shoots and scores. Pam Berry. Mm. Still 4 0. Shut out intact for Burke. And out. And a slap shot by Redmond from in front. Scores. Delay a game. How many times are you going to go over there? Six, seven times a game? Just no, you have it to go. I warned it. You took way too long to get over there. Would you put someone in the box? Check the stick. I'm oh, okay. I put someone in the here. box. Put someone in the box right now. Get it in. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good enough. <laughs> so a delay of game penalty. Let's take a look at uh, some of the experience garnered by those on Team Canada. Randy Gregg also with Edmonton in this lineup, and all they have four players that have, uh, at one time or another, belonged to the Edmonton Oilers. Here are the last two. And it comes back out over the blue line, so the U.S. will have to regroup. Okay. Bill Gray picks up the loose puck. His shot is deflected wide and comes back out to center ice. Nine minutes to play. Team Canada leading by a score of 5 nothing and another fight. You bet. It's Kenny Uremchuk from Canada and Clark Donatelli. Ooh. From Team USA. Now everybody's carrying off. Whoop, we have a real big one going over to the side. 
there he's been punching on the ice. I think it's Trent Yanni from Team Canada. Yeah, that's Yanni. And that's Dave Snuggerud out of the University of Minnesota, who wears number 22 when it's on his back. I tell you, the Lions would have taken a pretty good beating here, too. the better of that scrap. Well, once you get the jersey up, mm. you can't see what you're doing, and nor can you punch. Your arms are tied up, and Trent Yanni, you know, Dave Snuggerud has played college hockey. Trent Yanni's a little older, a little wiser, a little more experienced, and a little bigger than Dave Snuggerud, so he got the, the jump on him, and it was downhill from there. So the third period, stacking up much as the first period did. And we'll be back with 8.58 to play. Well, everybody seems to have their respective jerseys back on, including the linesmen and the referees. There's Kenya Remchuk. He uh, was actually the guy that was originally pursued that started this thing. It was Clark Donatelli who was facing Remchuk. They were looking at each other, probably asking each other if they wanted to, to have a go. And it was Donatelli that finally just said, I'm not going to talk anymore. Made up my mind I want to go. And after that, Dave Snuggerud, there he is, number 22. Squared off with big Trent Yanni from Team Canada. <laughs> and paid the price. No, it's just a, those numbers are running. It's the color in the 22 that's running. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Cheap laundromat. Jones is off. And remember now, you already had the, the double minors assessed to both Duggan and Jones with 310 remaining on those. Five minute major for fighting in a game. <laughs> 17 That's Yoni. white. Five That's minute major in a game. That's Donatelli. 13, he's got four minutes roughing. Your M truck. Red. And 22, he's got four minutes roughing. Snuggerud. So they'll even out. No. Yeah, he's he's gone. Don't you don't put the majors up because they're offsetting. Two fives, two game penalties, and a pair of double minors. You know the rules have changed a lot over the last few years, and to be honest with you, I don't know if we're playing this game under the International Ice Hockey Federation rules or the. Uh, International Olympic Committee, because I was under the impression that if it was a, the International Olympic Committee, that if you fought during one of the games, you were gone. Mm -hmm. And that would lead me to believe that believe that we're under the IIHF mm -hmm. uh, rules for this game. Subtle differences, but this might be one of them yeah. right here. Well, Your guy was the aggressor. That's why. Same one over there. Let's go. It's the instigation rule to which uh, Dave Peterson referred earlier in his uh, discussion with Michael Ruzioni. And that, uh, that leaves Serge Boisvert, number 12, 0-2 in the debate department tonight mm -hmm. with referee Rutherford. That's the second time we've heard him debating, only to have referee Rutherford say sorry. that sorry. Three on three we are. Hey, move that puck around now. Move that puck around. Let's see if we can get one. I have talked to people that have seen him play, and obviously he's a, he's typical in the sense that, sure, periodically he lets in a, a bad goal or what goalies call a weak goal, but he certainly hasn't today. Two on one, and the U.S. finally gets on the board as Danny puts it in on a pass from Brown. The schedule involves so many games against the U.S. colleges, but uh, there will be plenty to learn from this game tonight and the one this afternoon, at least, and the one in Minneapolis. And the two teams will face each other again on Monday. We have a penalty coming up here. On Monday, they'll move to Toronto and face each other at Maple Leaf Gardens. George Shervin will spend the next two minutes or the rest of the game, unless the U.S. winds up scoring here in the penalty box. Pretty calm and relatively placid second period, but a raucous first and a wild third. You know, I think the more teams become familiar with one another, the greater the chance of uh, feuds developing between certain players, and these guys have... Uh, seen one another quite a bit over the last six months and they've seen each other before they even arrived in their respective teams a lot of them so it's bound to build 
And especially when you play a, a few games in a row, you know, you, you'll know you got a chance the next time out to, to get even or whatever. Yeah. And today's game has produced 80 minutes in penalties, which is a lot for international hockey. 